Hello, everyone. Are we ready to have some fun tonight? I think we're ready to have some fun tonight. Share the crap out of this because we are going to have one hell of a show tonight. It is the Rob Carson Show for June the 5th, 2018. It's the Rob Carson Show. Are you ready to be pod smacked? Now, here's Rob Carson. Here is Rob Carson. Hello and welcome to the show. Glad to have you joining me. Hope you had a glorious day. I had a glorious day. Very busy here. We got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of stuff to talk about tonight. Bill Clinton talking about Monica Lewinsky. He's got a new book out. I don't know what it's all about. In fact, who knows? (laughs) <laughs> anyway, we're going to get into that. Um, the latest, the, the the new low that the media has struck with regard to this president, and that is accusing him of abusing his wife. And I, I don't even know where to start. I don't even know where to start on that, guys. Bill Clinton talking about uh, a couple of interviews over the weekend. He's got a new, uh, I don't know, uh, porn magazine. Uh, no, it's a book. It's a book, I guess. Got very defensive, blamed essentially, uh, uh, you know, played victim with regard to uh, Monica Lewinsky's backtracked on that today. We'll get to the audio on that, the video on that. The president disinviting the uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. We're going to get into that. Two basketball teams say they're not going to go. Whoever the championship is. Newt Gingrich says we're closer to a red wave than a blue wave. And you know what? It's a dem- it's a Republican wave versus a Democrat wave. I don't. I got a lot of. I got a lot of Samantha B stuff. Um, all sorts of madness. All sorts of fun. Glad to have you here. On the left side of the screen, you'll see my T-shirt swag line right there. These are some of the designs. Seventy-five of them. See that uh, this little uh, website right here. Tpublic.com/slash/conservatives. That's where we'll get them. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get the. Uh, the Facebook page up here, and say hello to Linda. Hello, Linda, my dear. How are you? Please share with you, uh, with others if you would. Look at all the love. Oh, my Lord in heaven, I love you guys. You are so spectacular. You're so spectacular. Here's the thing. I'm, I promise I'm going to give you a great show tonight. That's what I'm going to give you tonight, all right? So for the next 55 minutes or so, it's you and me, okay? It's you and me. First Lady Melania Trump's communications director, Stephanie Grisham, condemned a disgusting tweet from Atlantic senior editor David Frum containing a hypothetical situation with the president hitting his wife. Frum went after President Trump, his personal attorney, Jay Sekulow, and now former Trump attorney, John Dowd, in a tweet asking whether Trump would be obstructing justice if he punched the First Lady and ordered the Secret Service to cover up the assault. Now, Hillary Clinton apparently was known for throwing crap at her schmuck husband, but the Secret Service never said anything about it. This is just, to me, it's just sickening. David Frum. Suppose the president punched First Lady in the White House, then ordered the Secret Service to conceal the uh, assault. POTUS has Article 2 authority over Secret Services, that obstruction. What a, just an absolute D word for Richard. What an absolute D word from Richard. Hey, Shanna, how you doing, by the way? Hey, Helen, nice to have you here tonight. Suppose President Trump, I, I just, is this to me is unbelievable. Is that obstruction? Apparently, no. Rolling Stones, Jamil Smith tweeted his suspicions about the prolonged, poorly explained public absence of First Lady Melania Trump, even though she went into uh, the hospital to have a uh, kidney issue resolved. I wish that I didn't expect that the prolonged, poorly explained public absence of Melania Trump could be about concealing abuse. I wish that it was a a ludicrous prospect. I wish that the POTUS wasn't a man with a history of abusing women, including those who he has married. Really? Has he punched somebody? Has has he punched somebody? Really? But did Bill Clinton, is there a reason why uh, Hillary Clinton nearly uh, fainted out, or did did faint outside the van after the 9-11 memorial? Is it because Bill Clinton beat the crap out of her? Is that it? 
Is that the reason? I'm going to tell you, this is just, this is effed in the head. This is just sick. Melania's recent step back in from the spotlight, ideas have ranged from an unhappy move to New York, to plastic surgery, to hiding out of the Obamas. With the Obamas, while she writes her tell-all, CNN's Brian Stelter falsely told the uh, audience of reliable sources, reliable, that's funny, that she had become invisible. Not so much. Atlantic Senior, I already told you about this dipwad David Frum. She went to Walter Reed, guys. A routine kidney procedure on May 14th. An embolization was performed. Not uncommon. Uh, honestly, what, what else? What is, is he beating the crap out of Barron? Is he abusing his son? What, 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 what the hell else are you going to do? I haven't seen much of Barron lately. Is it because he's, he's uh, abusing his son? Are you out of your effing minds? I got to tell you. I just, I don't even know where they'll go from here. I honestly don't know where the media will go from here. Speculating that Donald Trump beats his wife. I I got a feeling, I don't think, I don't think Melania had put up with that crap. I could be wrong. But I don't think I am. Look at all the comments. Hello, Carmen. How are you? Good to have you guys joining me. All right. Bill Clinton had a couple of uh, tough interviews over the weekend. With regard to, uh, you know, the hashtag Me Too movement and whatnot. Here is Bill Clinton uh, talking uh, uh, about the hashtag Me Too movement. And, and, and I believe this is the clip where he says that he actually claims that he's a victim. Uh, questions about some of the decisions which have been made. This March, Monica Lewinsky penned an op-ed in Vanity Fair taking responsibility for her part in the scandal, but also admitting that years later she was diagnosed with PTSD from the unrelenting public scrutiny. Can you imagine as a 23-year-old or a 22-year-old going through what she went through? And this is a, this is a kid. <clears throat> this is a guy who's a master manipulator. Master manipulator. Betting her. Or in his case, desking her. And then having to suffer through the rest of her damned life as Monica Lewinsky, an intern who gave the president a BJ. President wasn't a victim here. This person's life was forever changed. She will never be known as anything but the, you know, whatever you want to call her, who did the president in the Oval Office. One of the things that this this Me Too era has done, it's forced a a lot of women uh, to speak out. One of those women... And he was an adult. Monica Lewinsky. She wrote an op-ed that the Me Too movement changed her view of sexual harassment. Quote, he was my boss. He was the most powerful man on the planet. He was 27 years my senior with enough life experience to know better, he was at the time, at the pinnacle of his career, <laughs> while I was in my first job yes. uh, out of college. Looking back on... What, what kind of a job was that? What what sort of a job was that? There's something before that. Was it a... Uh, I don't know. There's something, there's something before job there. I'm not sure what it is. Happened then. Through the lens of Me Too now. Do you, do you think differently? Or feel more... He has no regrets. He has no regrets. The women are, are toys to him. He has no regrets. He's a sociopath. He, he, he doesn't feel regret. He feels regret because he was caught. He doesn't feel embarrassment. It's not possible for him. No, I felt terrible then. Yeah, you felt really bad. Oh, my God. I'm sure you just felt destroyed that you strayed from your wife. Like all of the other times you did. And I came to grips with it. Did you ever apologize no, and for it? No, yes. And nobody believes that I got out of that for free. I left the White House $16 million in debt. <laughs> That's what he took from it. That's what he took from it. That, that he left the White House in debt. You don't have to carry it with yourself. The weight of being a woman who destroyed a presidency. Can you imagine? Can you imagine Monica Lewinsky as a 23-year-old kid right out of college? You remember graduating from college? Maybe you didn't graduate from college. 
Can you imagine being saddled with that for the rest of your life? Everything you do from now on is surrounded by you and the president in the Oval Office. Everything you do. You won't, if you've thought about maybe a career in business, if you thought maybe about a career in whatever, it's gone. It's gone. She will always be known, and pardon me, with Democrats, she'll always be known as the whore that seduced the president that they loved. And I only use that word because that's what she's been through. A kid, a kid who was nothing more than a piece of ass to this ass right here. She was nothing more than a piece of ass to this SOB. And I'm sure that he used all sorts of things to manipulate her, to bed her, or to desk her. A little bit more from this ex-president. But you typically have ignored gaping facts. Gaping? In describing this, and I bet you don't even know them. This was litigated 20 years ago. Two-thirds of the American people sided with me. They were not insensitive to that. I didn't. I had a sexual harassment policy when I was governor in ha! the ha! 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 80s. I had two women chiefs of staff when I was governor. Did you try to open your humidor to them? Women were overrepresented in the attorney general's office in the 70s. Well, you wanted a lot of women in the office. I mean, there's you got to have something to choose from. For their percentage in the bar. I've had nothing but women leaders sure. in my office since yes. I left. Sure. You are giving one side and omitting facts. Mr. President, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to present a side. <laughs> no, no, I'm, you asked me if I agreed. The answer is no, I don't. And I, well, I asked if you'd ever apologized, and you said you had. I have. You've apologized to everybody. I apologize to everybody in the world. It is important to me that everybody who God, has been cool. hurt... What a tool. Know that the sorrow I feel is... Oh, yeah, I'm sure you were just broken. Genuine. Yeah. Oh, there goes the, the lip bite. The lip bite. Oh, First and most important, my family. Yes, of course. Monica Lewinsky and her family. Yeah, Monica Lewinsky. A fine piece of... But you didn't apologize to her. I have not talked to her. Do you I, feel I like thought you owe her an apology? No, I do. I, I, I do not... <laughs> I've never talked to her. You just, oh. But I did say publicly on more than one occasion that I was sorry. Whatever. God, you're such a tool. You're such a tool. Bill Clinton said if he was a, if there, if there were, um, well, here's talking about uh, I- impeachment with regard to Republicans. Uh, the reason why that uh, he was impeached, it, it wouldn't have happened with a Republican candidate. I believe this is what the comet is about. Agree with her. As for the investigation led by Robert okay. Mueller, right. swirling around the current commander-in-chief. We now call it Spygate. Do you think that the press has been there fair go. to President Trump? I think they have tried, by and large, to cover this investigation based on the facts. Really? I think if the roles were reversed, now this is me just talking about it based on my experience. If there were a Democratic president and these facts were present... Most people I know in Washington believe impeachment hearings would have begun already. Really? What what has Donald Trump done that would be impeachable, other than just being Donald Trump and being a conservative Republican? <laughs> Look at all the love we're getting here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Hello, Linda. Hello, Kathy. Susan, hello. Give me some love. Show me some emojis. Show me some shares, if you wouldn't mind. I would really appreciate it. I've got a lot of stuff coming up here. Now, here is... Um, Bill Clinton kind of backtracking, I guess, today with regard to the things that he said yesterday, which were absurd. Because, you know, honestly, guys, you know, I'm not a perfect person, but at the same time, there's a point in your life where you have to grow the F up. You know, you have to grow up and you have to be a man. You have to be a father. You have to be a husband. And I'm not saying that I've done a great job at all of those things, but I, I don't cheat on my wife. This guy should have known better. He had a pattern of, you know, what he did. I'm going to get to what Bill Clinton had to backtrack on today in just one second. 
I want to mention a, uh, a sponsor of the show, and I'll tell you, uh, I'm very passionate about barbecue, okay? Uh, I have spent the last 25 years of my life perfecting, smoking, slow-roasting meats. This is the greatest product that I've ever seen. Pit barrel cookers, okay? One on the left there, or your screen left, is the Pit Barrel Classic, and they have a Pit Barrel Junior that's smaller. See all that food on the right there? I made that. <laughs> I made that. You can slow smoke, slow cook, and grill. Same barrel. And they last you forever. Created by a uh, veteran who came back with PTSD. Came back from Iraq. Some veterans made him barbecue, and he says... I am home again. You got to order one of these cookers. You got to have one. Not electric, just charcoal and wood. Oh, God bless it. LibertyOneTV.com slash cooker to order. LibertyOneTV.com slash cooker. Spectacular. All right. I do like to make me some barbecue. All right. Here's uh, here's the president kind of backtracking a little bit because he kind of looked like an a-hole over the weekend. Oh, hold on. Let me just cancel this. Hold on one second. Uh, but here's here's the president kind of backtracking you know, over the uh, over the well the last twenty four hours. Um, I got to get rid of my music here. All right, let me get rid of that. Here is the president backtracking on what he said over the weekend with regard to uh, being a victim of Monica Lewinsky. The truth is, the hubbub was I got hot under the collar. Oh, he got hot under the collar because of. Usually he's kind of hot under the belt. Yeah, I'm just saying, a little hot under the belt is what he is. All right, here we go. The way the questions were asked, and I think what was yeah. lost are the two points that I made yes. that are important to me. God, get this man a glass of water. I, is it, is it, I hope I am not in this bad a shape when I'm 70 years old. He sounds like he's 100 years old, and he needs some water. He needs, listen to him occasionally. Mm-mm, get a little dry, but my God, nothing like this. Listen, oh, got to back that up. Listen, get the man a glass of water. The suggestion was that I never apologized for what caused all just some water. The trouble for me twenty years ago. So, first point is, I did. Yeah, I'm sure you did. You uh, apologize to that uh, woman, Monica Lewinsky, who you did not have sexual relations with. A minute. Oh, listen to that. Listen to how dry his mouth is. It's like it's like the Crypt Keeper. Remember the Crypt Keeper? A minute then, a minute now. I apologize to my family. Sure. To Monica Lewinsky and her family. Sure. And to the American people. Yeah, it is. Before a panel ah. of ministers. Maybe in- just a lozenge. Lot, it's kind of dated. A halls, something, I don't know, whatever. In the White House, which was widely reported. So I, was, I did that. I meant it then. God, he's such a sociopathic. There are words. And I mean it today. I live with it all the time. Sure you do, dude. The second is. No, you don't. You don't. You don't even think about it twice. <laughs> you don't think about it twice. You moved on, you doofus, because you got away with it. You don't think about it at all. Are you out of your nut? You've raised uh, billions of dollars, and uh, literally a couple billion dollars in your Clinton Foundation. You don't think about it twice, you ass, because you survived, because you were supported by the media. You don't you don't feel a lick of guilt and I use that expression very, you know, carefully that I support the Me Too movement and I think it's long overdue. <laughs> wow! That is spectacular. <laughs> For Bill Clinton it is uh, you know, I'd really like to bang her and he goes, "Me too." <laughs> I mean, that's what it is. right? I'd I'd really like a piece of that. Yeah, me too. And I have always tried to support it in the decisions and policies that I've advanced. You are positions? Did he say positions? What positions are we talking about? I can think of a couple positions. There's There's a number. 
there's a an animal the a canine animal there's that position <laughs> wow oh my goodness oh my goodness oh my goodness oh my goodness oh Tanita says he sounds terrible. He's such a douche. Carmen says he sounds drunk or high on something. He's just an old, dried out, I don't even know what to think about. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit about the uh, the Eagles, Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, they were headed to the White House, and there were 70 players on the team, and apparently only 10 of the players were expected to be in attendance at the ceremony at the White House. So Donald Trump said, hey, you know what? Screw you. He made him into a, like a, a, I guess, some sort of a uh, patriotic event today, and I think that's great. Team owner Jeffrey Lurie was expected to make the trip. Travel party was expected to be very small. Most of the players that hoisted the Lombardi Trophy in Minneapolis were not planning to attend. The White House rescinded the invitation less than 24 hours for the scheduled ceremony. You know what? F them. F the Eagles. F the Eagles and their players. They are drinking the Kool-Aid. They are convinced that Donald Trump, even though that he has uh, caused or his policies appear to have caused the lowest African-American unemployment rate in history. Even though that uh, he they're 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 drinking the Kool-Aid that Donald Trump is some sort of a racist. If, in fact, he is a racist, he's the worst racist in the history of mankind. He is the worst racist because wouldn't you think that if if under um, uh, Adolf Hitler, okay, Adolf Hitler is the uh, chancellor of Germany, and uh, he goes into office and he hates the Jews and he hates the Jews, and under his his uh, chancellorship, Jews are flourishing, their businesses are being run spectacularly. Uh, the the Jewish unemployment rate is an all time low. Don't you think that Adolf Hitler would go? What am I doing wrong? I, I can't do a German accent. But don't you think that he would go, what? Donald Trump is the worst racist of all time. He really is. I mean, if you want to be good at something, be, you know, I want, to, I want to be the best racist ever. So mm, let's see what I'll do. Um, I'm going to really make the people who I hate because of race suffer. Donald Trump, if he's a if he's truly a racist, he's got to be sitting in the White House every night going, "What? Okay, get you know Adolf on the line here because honestly, these people need to suffer more." I know under Barack Obama in the inner cities of America, uh, there was there was the murder rate went through the ceiling. What are we doing wrong? We need to get back to where Obama was with regard to poverty, food stamps, all of that. What the hell did he do that we are doing wrong? Right? Right? LeBron James. Like, if anybody gives a shite about the NBA playoffs, honestly, in the heartland, do you really give a crap about the NBA effing playoffs? Dear God. Cleveland Cavaliers. I didn't even know he played for Cleveland. Cleveland has a team. I know that. LeBron James said Tuesday neither his team nor the Golden State Warriors would visit the White House if they won the NBA Finals this season because, of course, Donald Trump is a racist. Here's what LeBron had to say. Pretty amazing. I think he has a couple two-syllable words here, which is a big deal for him. I know no matter who wins the series, no one wants the invite to the White House, so it won't be Golden State or Cleveland going. James' remarks came in response to President Trump's decision to disinvite the Eagles. Quote, this is according. This is according to the White House. They disagree with the president because they're, uh, he, he insists that they proudly stand for the national anthem, although no players on the team kneel, blah, blah, blah. I've got that. Okay. James said the decision by Trump was typical of him. James had no plan to ever visit the White House with anybody but a Democrat in office. Both James and Stephon Curry backed Hillary Clinton for president when she ran against Trump. You know what? F you. Honestly, F you. <clears throat> F the NBA. Honestly, you've always kind of sucked since Michael Jordan left. It was glorious. It was wonderful. But you kind of suck right now. I want to mention another. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> I'm a foodie, okay? I love me some... It, mm. 
there is a pretzel on the market that is the best damned pretzel you've ever had in your life. I'm not kidding. Guys, I met the owner of this pretzel company at a winery a year ago. It's called Dots Pretzels. Okay, this is a Midwestern concern. You can find them all over the Midwest. You can go online to dotspretzels.com. Although the last time you went to dotspretzels.com, you you collapsed their mail order system because you ordered so many. My Lord in heaven, these are the best pretzels you've ever had in your life. They are salty. They are buttery. They are spicy. You cannot stop eating them when you start. I trust me on this. I wouldn't lead you astray. They are the best pretzels you've had in your life. Normally, you're thinking pretzels. Eh, pretzels, they're salty and they're doughy. And there are a lot of carbs, and you put mustard on them. You don't need a thing with these. Oh, my Lord. These are the best pretzels you've ever had in the history of mankind. I promise you, if you disagree, you write me. But I'm going to tell you, when you order these pretzels, when you order these pretzels, you're going to go, oh, my Lord. All the wasted years not trying Dots pretzels. They're spectacular. DotsPretzels.com. If you live in the Midwest, go to their website and just look it up. They'll be around. They're at True Value stores. They're at a variety of different stores in the Midwest from South Dakota to uh, to Missouri. And I'm going to, you will eat these. Oh, I'm not lying to you, folks. When my wife brings home a bag of Dots Pretzels, I go nuts. Spectacular. I'm telling you. I <laughs> All right, well, we're just going to go here. Let's go. Let's go to um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Newt Gingrich uh, has got a new book out. Newt Gingrich talking about the uh, <laughs> I'm just going to say it again, guys. This whole red or blue wave with regard to Democrats taking office, I take extreme offense to because Democrats are red. This all was created, this whole blue state, red state thing was created when Barack Obama was running for president in 2008 and didn't want to point out the fact that his policies are red. So I don't say there's a blue wave with regard to Democrats. I don't believe it. The Democrats are not blue. They are red. They are commie red. They are socialist red. If you don't believe that, then just check their damn policies. And I hate to be saddled with this crap. This crap was created by the media. So. Is there going to be a Democrat wave in November? No. You know why? Because terrific things are happening in the economy. Terrific things are happening in the country. Terrific things are happening around the world with regard to U.S. foreign policy. We are not uh, P words for kittens anymore. The world once again respects us. ISIS is being crushed. China is being told, you know what? We're tired of being screwed by you without a lubricant or a glass of wine. North Korea is saying, you know, I think we we might give up those nuclear weapons. Here is uh, Newt Gingrich talking about the, and I'm just going to, he says it's a, a red wave coming with the, uh, the Democrats. And eh, not so much, not so much and author of the new book, Trump's America, which is out on Tuesday. Congratulations, Mr. Speaker. It's always a pleasure to see you. It's good to be with you. Thank you so much for joining us. Your thoughts on this Google search. You search. Oh, starting off the conversation, talking about Google search, uh, saying that the California Republican Party was uh, associated with Nazism and a uh, and a Republican candidate being called a bigot. Two things. California Republicans. First of all, I think that Google has an obligation. Google. Google is a joke. It is a it is big brother. It is Big Brother times 10. No, George Orwell never imagined, never imagined the power of Google of some system. or YouTube or Facebook. I'm fixing things like this and being able to do it within a couple of hours. And I do think they run a risk that they're going to start getting hearings if, if in fact... This is used as an engine of left-wing propaganda. It is big. People are going to demand, I think, real reform. Let me also say, and then Devin De- 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 Nunes has been very courageous. Uh, but let me also say about California. I think John Cox is going to be in the runoff for okay, governor. Okay, yeah, I'm going to move on. Sense. Sorry. The Democrats are going to continue to get more seats. And you heard Nancy Pelosi say, I will be the next speaker. And when <laughs> I am the next speaker, no, she I won't. will uh, reform taxes. In other words, raise, raise taxes. taxes and do away with the president's tax cut yes. plan. Well, yes. and, and her deputy said flatly he would raise taxes. Uh, 
It reminded me of Walter Mondale in 1984. Oh, God. I promise you I will raise your taxes. Yeah, that worked well. Uh, That's not a very good selling line right before. I wasn't old old enough to vote then, but yeah. Well, and, and I think for everybody in America who thinks that the cost of living is too low, the Democrats are a great party for them yeah. because they will raise taxes yeah. as they have in California with this huge uh, gas tax increase. I actually believe we are closer to a red wave thank you. than a blue wave. Thank you. Now, if you went back to December, frankly, I was concerned. The, the huge generic gap. We had not yet passed the tax cuts. Yes. Things didn't feel right. People were upset that they'd had a year and things hadn't been accomplished. But starting with passing the tax cuts, with what President Trump has done consistently on conservative judges, on deregulation, on trade negotiations, uh, <clears throat> what he's done with North Korea. I think people now have a sense that we're moving. He is kicking ass and taking names, people. In the right direction. Uh, and as a result, for example, in the Senate, I think I can't imagine. I don't know of anybody who's a serious student who believes the Democrats have any hope of winning the Senate. Because they have no message. What is their message, kids? It is impeach Donald Trump. It is uh, raise the minimum wage to fifteen dollars. Reason being, used to be ten ten. Now it's fifteen because they need employees to have, make enough money to contribute to unions. <laughs> That's what it is. That's why it's fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. They need enough money to contribute to unions. Would support the Democrat Party. Yeah. T- tell me it's different, please, please, please disagree with me. Uh, if you if you do, that's fine. But you're high, uh, and of course infrastructure, which is work, not jobs. That's the promise of the glorious Democrat Party. Well, in fact, we're likely to gain seats. I think that Menendez in New Jersey is in trouble because of his scandals. I think that yeah, he's, he's, he's also a douche. Cup Florida, because Governor Scott's a very strong candidate. Hello, Alan. Thank you for joining. Then you add in the other Trump states, starting with West Virginia, the North Dakota, Indiana, Missouri. Uh, we're likely to end up being somewhere between plus two and plus six. Okay, now you're getting into blah, 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 blah. And, you know, whatever. That's mental masturbation. It's the same way with both parties. Mental masturbation. It's this state and this state and this state. And they're always wrong. That's where that's where you lose me, Newt. That's where you lose me. When you get into that crap, because it's it's amazing. I think that the political pundits, honestly, are worse than, uh, you know, meteorologists. Meteorologists are more accurate than uh, political pundits. <laughs> they really are. <laughs> they're always wrong. Nobody expect Donald Trump to win. Uh, Ann Coulter. Oh, oh, with the speculation. Honestly, why even try? <laughs> why even try? Why even try? I want to also say something about another sponsor. Guys, I live in Kansas City. I lived in Kansas City in my 20s. I moved around the country, and I've been preaching the gospel of Kansas City barbecue. And I got to know this guy up here on the uh, left side of your screen, Chris Marks. He's a three-time winner of the American Royal World Series of Barbecue, which is the greatest competition in the history of mankind. He has created uh, a line of rubs and sauces. He only has one little barbecue restaurant in Kansas City. It got uh, uh, little, little, uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank on the place. But anyway, there's only one restaurant. You see that that in the middle there, the, the bread and the brisket and the brisket there? That's what I did using his rubs and the sauces. Three-little-pigs-barbecue.com. Wherever you live in the country, order this. Order this. Oh, it's going to change your life. It is going to change your life with regard to barbecue. Why should you have to suffer through mediocre barbecue when you can make it on your own using smoke and heat and Glorious rubs and sauces. Three dash little dash pigs dot com or dash barbecue dash dash com. Uh, unbelievable stuff. Unbelievable stuff. Michael Eric Dyson. This guy is such a complete tool. Has been a. I mean, he's just he's a racist. He's an a hole. He's a racist. He 
he says that Donald Trump is a white supremacist. This is this is when you're losing the argument. You you call somebody racist. And I started talking about this decades ago. I started talking about this decades ago. When you start using the word racism or racist when there's no racism present, it just cheapens your argument. It sickens me. And it's been going on forever. Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson yelling racism when racism is, is, not, is not present. And we're not in 1968 all over again. You know, my kids have been raised, they don't give a crap about skin color. And, of course, some a-hole leftist is going to say, well, they don't understand because you're white privileged. And now you know what? You're full of crap. You're full of crap! White privilege. Screw you. Live my life the last five effing years. See what privilege looks like. Live in Appalachia as a coal miner. Live in the Midwest as a farmer who feeds the rest of your fat asses. Who feeds the rest of your fat asses. Who raises the the, the beef that you love when you go out for dinner in Washington, D.C. Work the fields. Work the mines. Work the mills. I've been there in the field. Georgetown professor, Michael Eric Dyson, who obviously is a Georgetown professor in Washington, D.C., has suffered the slings and arrows of poverty in the Midwest or in Appalachia or in Mississippi. Probably not. Probably not. Here's Michael Eric Dyson on The View. It, it really, honestly... On The View, and The View is a turd, too. Here's Michael Eric Dyson talking about Donald Trump being a white supremacist. Alice is in knowledge. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Professor, you say in your new book, quote, the belief that the Democratic Party relentlessly exploits black support while neglecting black interests is compelling and legitimate. Mm. Right. So we saw the number of black voters drop mm. in the 2016 election. What do you think is going to happen in the midterm? This is because um, African Americans suffered greatly under Barack Obama. They did. <laughs> he relied on their votes and he abandoned them completely in so many ways. Well, I think, uh, look, Donald Trump is a wake-up call for all of us, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Really? Really? A wake-up call to the lowest unemployment rate on record with regard to African Americans. And even those people, look, I argued with black people who told me there was no difference between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Slow down with that maze, you're killing them. Yeah, there's a, yeah no, there's a, there's a major difference. Hillary Clinton would have ruined the economy and Donald Trump is making it great again. Huge difference, right? And people say, well, Hillary Clinton wasn't likable. She ain't trying to be your girlfriend, she got a man. Mm -hmm. She's trying to run the... Oh, now here he is getting all black and everything. Anything. He's doing like Will Smith. You know, he, he, you can imagine... Michael Eric Dyson in class at Georgetown, or where, where is he? George Washington. Georgetown. Imagine he's quite polite, but when he's, when he, when he decides, like, like um, uh, Will Smith, Will Smith, he'll say everything, and then another, he says, hey, thanks. Here is, uh, here is Michael Eric Dyson suddenly becoming a black man. She has more knowledge in her little finger than this man has in his entire body. Yeah, well, you know what? Um... Book smart isn't as good as real world smart. And, and on top of that... Oh, listen to the floppers in the audience going crazy. And on top of that, she also possessed the kind of integrity. We were doubtful of her. Look at this mendacious, relentlessly lying, bigoted, ill-informed person that we have. He is the fleshly thesaurus of white supremacy reduced to one body. So, yes, the Democratic Party has... And, he, and, he, and he, of course, he's on this show. And so he will be unchallenged. Meghan McCain will attempt to swim upstream against this a-hole who says these things that are nonsensical and bullcrap. It's been problematic, but it ain't enough to drive me to people who not only ignore me, but who don't understand the Republicans. He's getting all black here. Yeah. Don't understand they have an inbuilt advantage. He's an elitist Ivy League. You know, snob. Black people are morally conservative, even if they're politically progressive. They go to church, they read mm -hmm. the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Yeah. If Republicans weren't so racist, they could... Oh, here we go. Okay. Now you've crossed the line, you son of a... I am not a racist. Republicans are not racist. 
If anybody is racist, it's the Democrat Party. Why are the Democrats racist? Because the Democrat Party, when anybody tries to stray from the the ideological plantation, they are immediately ostracized. The, the hounds are sent out to hunt them down and bring them back to their senses. Man, you are such a sick, sick, sick individual. Encourage black people who are morally conservative to be on their side. I'm always arguing against black people in church about homophobia, about the place of women, but I know that there are some deep... When is the last time you went to church there, Michael? You're probably an atheist. You're a, you're a Georgetown tenured professor. Come on, man. Really rooted conservative values that need to be taken advantage of if Republicans weren't so bigoted and weren't so racist. All red Repu- we are not bigoted and racist, you a-hole. <laughs> I mean, I just... Somebody challenge this SOB. If I was on that panel, maybe I should just, um, I don't know. Maybe I should um, identify as the woman. I was into bigoted? Not I all. think that Hiller, I think that uh, Whoopi Goldberg does that. Of them, but enough of them to make a difference, enough of them who don't speak up. What, where are the Republicans oh. when unarmed black people are assaulted by police? <laughs> white folk to speak up. That's not just a black problem. That's not a female problem. That's an American oh, problem. Oh, here he goes. He's getting to the cadence. He's getting to the cadence where you can't interrupt him during the cadence. Eric can speak up in this place. <laughs> Michael Eric Dyson, you buffoon. <laughs> Just honestly, I don't even know what to say. Unbelievable. Former Obama administration aide Ben Rhodes has written a book. It's coming out apparently talked about Barack Obama saying that uh, he considered Donald Trump a cartoon. Ben Rhodes said Monday on uh, CBS This Morning with Gail King that Trump's opposition to Obama's policies is politically motivated. No. The policies were just completely effed. Opportunities on that campaign to get close to him. You said we didn't always get things right, but the larger project of, of believing that America is a better place. When you look at the Trump administration, many people believe that they're trying to unravel and undo everything that uh, the Obama administration yes. did. Yes. Does he feel that way? Right, that's Do why I voted members for of him. the administration feel that everything that you did, the work that you accomplished, that they're now trying to take it all apart? Do you feel that? Well, certainly, there's certain policies that they've targeted, you know, Paris Climate Agreement, Cuba, TPP. Yeah, yeah, all of those were um, a joke. All of those were terrible. Uh, With regard to uh, Cuba, uh, Cuba did nothing, did nothing in exchange for us lifting travel ban on Cuba. They did not a damn thing. They didn't release a single political prisoner. Are you out of your mind? The TPP was a joke. The climate, uh, the, 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 the... uh, uh, Paris Climate Agreement was a freaking joke. All it did was go after the real productive countries in the world to lower the boats instead of raising the lower boats to match the rest of them. A joke. There's not an ideological rationale for why you would take down all of those policies other than that Barack Obama did them. They were failed, actually. They were failed socialistic policies that ruined everything. <laughs> But again, it comes back to the what if we were wrong question. Uh, the, you know, look, I say in the book, we didn't get everything right. And I, I, well, I, you, I'm trying to think of the few things you got right. So I say that there are things I still don't know. I'm not certain about. I'll be thinking about the rest of my life. Yeah. I'm sure I'll be thinking about decision making. on. Yeah, because everything that you did is being erased and things are better. That, that's the amazing thing. You're, you're realizing that what you created was crap. What you created was crap. It kept the world, it kept the United States stagnated, the economy stagnated. It raised health care premiums. It caused our standing in the world as a superpower to collapse. We became a joke, all of that. I hope you have to sleep with that, you idiot. Because you're going to figure it out eventually. Like Jimmy Carter's presidency, you were a joke. The rest of my life. But the fact that America is a, a progressive, inclusive country. Progressive. <laughs> Progressive. Progressive is only progressive when you lean left. It's not progressive when you when you lower taxes. It's not progressive when you lower regulation. It's not progressive when your policies result in uh, the lowest African American unemployment rate and Hispanic unemployment rate in the country. It's only progressive if you 
support Democrat causes. It's only progressive. You think that that your kid should be able to go to school and your school should allow your kid to uh, uh, claim a gender that's not theirs at birth. Progressive. You hijack words. You hijack words. Progressive. How is anything that the Barack Obama administration do? How is it? How was it progressive? How was it progressive? How was it progressive? You look at the numbers, the economy, unemployment, food stamps, all that. Is it progressive to add to the number of unemployed? Is it progressive to stagnate wages? Is it progressive to put more people on food stamps? Is it progressive? You steal words, you hijack words. (laughs) It's just unbelievable. You're not pro-abortion, you're pro-life. pro uh, pro, uh, pro choice you pro choice yeah it's so one person's choice it's not being paid attention to and it's uh, you know, right down here a little bit more from this doofus that has a future that is more inclusive and more diverse yes inclusive and diverse yes that i truly do believe and yes. frankly i think that project- everybody seriously we're very diverse and inclusive we want everybody to be poor we want everybody to be out of work. Did they bomb a presidency um, that it will endure for decades? No one will. That's the direction. America- it's already dead. It's headed, and that's not the direction that Donald Trump uh, is headed. So yeah, okay, sure, buddy. You know, you keep you keep drinking that Kool Aid, there, buddy, bro. Keep drinking that Kool Aid. All right, I'm done with him. Female comic comics agree that Sam B should call more women the c word. This uh, included comic Nikki Glazer and her Sirius XM co-host Rachel Feinstein, who had an unexpected message. Basically boils down to female comics need to be calling more women the C-word. In an attempt to translate that into something intelligible, this is according to the Daily Beast, I'll clean up the worst of it with redactions, but I'll warn you that they, in advance that this is, uh, that if you click through blah, 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 blah. I'd rather be called the C-U-N-T than like ma'am, Nikki Glaser jokes before her set at Comedy Central's Cluster Fest on Saturday. Now, okay, this is... When you're a comedian, you're supposed to push the, the limit. When you're on stage, uh, sure, because you can get up and leave. When TBS runs a show that is so, so overtly, grotesquely vile and vitriolic, that's when I have a problem, Okay. Remember, maybe you probably don't remember, in the early 90s, Andrew Dice Clay. He used to do some sexist material. He was drummed out of the industry. Um, I'm a big supporter of stand-up comedians because I did it. I dabbled. I dabbled. And, um, and I believe in freedom of speech. And if you're in a comedy club, then, uh, you know, then you can get up and walk out. That's fine. I do have a problem with the broadcast medium like TBS or CBS. Becoming grotesque. That's what I saw with Samantha B. That's what I've seen with Stephen Colbert. You want to use the C word, you know, on your stand-up routine? Okay, that's fine. Is, is calling a woman a C word some sort of a liberating moment for a comedian? I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Comedians, a lot of times, are young people. They don't uh, think things through at times. Um... And just to say, more women should be called the C-word. Yeah, no, not really. They shouldn't. Call my wife the C-word. I'll, I, will, I will pound your ass into the ground. Okay? All right. Oh, what else do I have here? I think I've gone through basically all. Oh, 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 oh. Here is uh, CNN's John King talking about the Samantha B. Samantha B, where is she these days? Oh, I got some love. Look at the love. Look at the love. Thank you. Thank you. Should I say it again? If you ever call my wife the C word, I will hunt you down and I will pound you to dust. Thank you. Or love. Okay. Boop, boop, boop. Here's John King, actually, with a moment of clarity on CNN. I know it's crazy. Crazy. Welcome back today. Samantha B. silent 12 hours after she made a vile, reprehensible statement assailing President Trump's daughter. If you have children in the room, you might want to turn down the. Now, by the way, um, this is a couple days ago. Samantha B has disappeared off the map. You'll notice that uh, some cast members who worked with Roseanne Barr, they're still being interviewed. 
Roseanne Barr still being pursued by the paparazzi. Samantha B. She, there's, there's no, she nowhere to go. Where is she? Where's Samantha B. B. For a moment, asked him to walk away. On her Turner te television show, Full Frontal, B. Used a picture of Ivanka Trump to try to make a point about the Trump administration. Yes, we know this. John. Using that word is not funny. Sarah Sanders, the White House press secretary, just called okay, John. Time Warner. Uh, so uh, that is it. This is a family issue, if you will. Uh, anybody disagree? It's just there. Are, the president's daughter is fair game. Everybody involved in politics is fair game. Why do you have to use words that should not be spoken about any human being, whether it's the president's daughter or a perfect stranger? Why? Okay. Uh, thank you, John. Um, I just got that sound bite today. Uh, you know, stating the obvious. He says that uh, the comments about Ivanka were reprehensible. Well, you know, stating the obvious. CNN has a moment of clarity. By the way, CNN is apparently collapsing. Their ratings are so terrible, are just so terrible. Oh, this is so funny. Miss America competition. They're scrapping the swimsuit competition. <laughs> we'll no longer judge contestants based on physical appearance. Gretchen Carlson. I like Gretchen. She used to be on Fox. We are no longer a pageant. Oh, bull crap. Gretchen. Dear God, are we stupid here? We are a competition. In place of the swimsuit portion of the competition, Miss America contestants will now take part in a live interactive session with the judges. The contestants from all 50 states in the District of Columbia will be asked to demonstrate their passion, intelligence, and overall understanding of the job of Miss America. Miss America, so dated. I'm sorry, it's so dated, Miss America. I don't want my daughter to ever be in the pageant system. It's a joke. I mean, honestly, honestly. Isn't it time to scrap Miss USA, Miss America, Miss Universe? Isn't it just time, Gretchen? I mean, I know you're passionate about it and all this stuff, but I mean, come on. Do they do a Mr. America? It just, it's just insufferable. The organization also considering getting rid of the evening count portion of the competition. I think they need to add, why, don't, why, why go this direction? Why don't you just uh, look at their teeth like a horse? While you're in there, because honestly, that's what the Miss America pageant is like. It, it just it's it. It is an insufferable competition. I would never want my daughter to be a part of this. And by the way, this isn't. This doesn't mean that ugly, fat, and I don't want to say you know. But but honestly, people who might be regarded as ugly with traditional standards or potentially obese will never be a part of this competition. It's not about anything but looks and a rudimentary understanding of at least one aspect of world events and, and at least trying to sound intelligent. It's a pageant. Dear Lord. I'm sorry. I, I, I just, am I wrong here, folks? Maria and Tonita, we got a lot of women. I, I just, the pageant thing just sickens me. Child pageants, adult pageants, swimsuit competition, evening, it's just dated. It's just so damn dated. Get rid of it. And they call it a scholarship pageant. It's a scholarship pageant. No, you know, whatever. You get a scholarship. But honestly, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a dinosaur from days past. Can we let it go? You know? Yeah. Maybe I've made you mad. I hope I haven't made you mad. I just think the pageant system is awful. I really do. I think it's a bunch of insus. It, it just awful people grooming women like, like uh, you know, a, a dog show. <laughs> I'm mean, sorry. That's just the way I feel about it. Uh, the swag line right up here. Look at this. These are all my uh, designs, and I've worked with a guy named San Cangelosi. You can put these on T-shirts, onesies, whatnot. Tpublic.com. Conservatees, conservatees. I want to thank you guys for joining me tonight. It is a blessing to know you're watching. Things are growing. Things are things are becoming bigger despite all of the restrictions on Facebook. Uh, Alan and and Jeremy, look at all the love I'm getting. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. It means so much that you're here. All of my brothers and sisters on Liberty One TV, we do different shows. My show, I try to make funny. I try to make funny. I try to make it impactful. And I hope you enjoy it and I hope you share it. Because I tell you what, all of the people on this network bust their asses. Rusty Humphreys. All of the guys on here. And we're trying to build this. Trying to make it big. So share the word if you would. All right? So, time for me to go. I'm going to be back here live once again tomorrow night and Thursday night.
Got a full-time job during the day. So my day started really early today. <laughs> my job started really early. But you know what? I'm not complaining because I've got to hang out with you. All right? God bless you guys. Have a glorious evening. Thanks for watching. Share the word. And we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for listening to The Rob Carson Show. Friend him on Facebook at Carson Show. On Twitter at Rob Carson. And on Instagram. Uh, I think Facebook and Twitter are enough for now. We'll see you soon.